the big thing is to make sure that it goes down safe. It's not uh, telling people what they can do and what they can't do. It's more explaining that we just want it to go where no one gets hurt. That's that's basically direct orders from the band. Okay, what do you do that's so different than other security chiefs? We don't believe in violence at all. And if somebody's getting out of control, we talk to them. We, we just make them aware that we know the music pumps them up. We know that it takes them to another level. But at the same time, we're all human beings, and we expect everybody to treat each other the same. Uh, and if somebody gets out of control a little bit, we give them the benefit of the doubt that the music wound them up a little bit. And then we just have a conversation and goes right back in, goes right back into the audience. What made you guys go back to your roots and get really heavier? Was it the new drummer or was it what you guys all wanted to do or is it what Lombardo did not want to do? Hello. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> what I like to do, man. It had nothing to do with Lombardo. Oh, little kid. All right, dude. All right. All right. Don't burp. <laughs> How many drums you got? One or two? Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> <Bye -bye. laughs> How many drums you got? I got ten. <laughs> got ten drums. Ten drums. <laughs> People want to march. They want to dance. What's wrong with that? Instead of keep saying no, it's dangerous. Why not say yes? But we have to ask you to help us make it safe. This is what we need from you. And this is the way it should go down. It's got to stop with the no's. I don't say yes to marching, and I don't say no to marching. But what I do say is, what do we need to make it safer for those for those kids? If we can do it at this level, at the intensity of this audience, then we, there's no excuse why it can't be done in any show. We've proven that. This is the way we do it. This is how safe we do it. And we show it in the numbers at night when you have no ejections going out the door and you have maybe three or four people going to first aid. Uh, that's great numbers. You have you got more at a Country Western show than you have at our shows. How do you feel about Black Sabbath getting back together again with Ron JPL? Uh, uh, Sabbath is not mine. I mean, I've been, I've been uh, away from Black Sabbath uh, playing with them for, for on my own longer than I was with them, you know. So some people, you know, tend to forget that. And uh, I've played with many different people since Black Sabbath. But I will not stand here and slag Black Sabbath up because without Black Sabbath, I wouldn't be standing here today to get this award. So, you know, good luck to them, you know. There's enough room for us all. I'm back in the band that I really believe in. I'm back in the family that I believe in. Probably the happiest family that I've ever been in. And with the attitude that we have, we cannot not succeed because we don't have a dinosaur attitude. We are not doing this because we're reforming to need the money. I don't need the money. Tony doesn't need the money. He doesn't need the money. If we needed the money, then we'd do it for that reason. And we wouldn't do an album. We'd only probably go and do a tour or more. Gee, we made a fortune, didn't we? Now, we've chosen to put our butts on the line. Put your butt on the line with making a record that people got to listen to you about email or yes. So for me, uh, I feel that there's no possibility that this is going to fail at all. I'm the kind of person who won't let it fail, nor will the others, and, and it's going to work. It's going to be great. First, with like bands like Black Sabbath and Motorhead. And then came more like bands like Hellhammer and more like violent bands like Venom and also a lot of hardcore influence which like Discharge, GBH, 
a lot of Finland bands. It was like a whole mix of like, the underground music at that time. Brazil got death metal bands there. It's like a, you know, it's it's kind of surprising, you know, because most of all death metal bands were coming yeah. from Europe, you know, for more grindcore stuff, and you had more uh, basic death metal, which was coming from Florida, which death was and Morbid Angel were kind of their first ones, you know. Fast drumming, um, real crunchy guitars, and. Uh, heavy vocals, you know. Pretty much, um, you know, the vocals and the lyrical content have a lot to do with the death metal sound. You know, there's bands that are grindcore that, uh, you know, have a little different sound, but some people might say they're death metal. So it's basically all in the listeners. You know, like Jack said, you might consider something death metal, another per person might not. But as for everybody out there, we're death metal. Grindcore is a little more of like a hardcore edge to it, you know, um, they sing more, a little bit more about politically, politically uh, involved lyrics and things like that. Um, they really don't dwell on horror or anything like that or Satanism, so uh, I think you know, that pretty much separates the two. Wow, it's a real extreme music it, and it's a mix of, of like hardcore music, like which is like real like uh, adrenaline and with with some lyrics which like have a lot to do with violence and things like that and things that we live in Brazil. It's energetic music. Gets the adrenaline flowing. You it's gotta something. love it. You gotta love it. It's some if you go to most concerts there's nothing to do. Come here, you can run around, slam against people, have the best time of your life. The problem happening now is there's a lot of bands in the death metal scene. I mean, there's, it's overpopulated. And the problem we're having now is a lot of them aren't having their own original sound, which is hurting the name for everyone else. So I think what, what needs to happen is the, the good ones need to be sorted out and they need to rise up the top and then I think things will get you know pretty much underway. I think things will be a lot better once that happens. It's an abundant ab amount of bands right now um, because death metal is growing. Um, most of the bands will weed themselves out after a while and the, the more established bands will, will stick around. We're, we're trying to uh, expand into classical fields too. We're trying to combine death metal with classical uh, feeling to get that more spiritual divine feeling in the music. In Sweden, you know, death metal is starting to get, you know, the same publicity as, you know, that, you know, that sort of music. And it's really great. It's been, you know, growing bigger and bigger and, yeah, stepping up from the from underground scene, so it's cool. People were selling 10,000 records, now they're selling 100,000 records. Yeah. Sepultura is selling 400,000 records, I mean, it's growing by the these pounds. They're not stopping it, so they might as well just try to, you know, try to at least understand it. People used to think that death metal was just fearless, noisy music, you know, and all the whole the um, talentless mu musicians were all in that music. They were all, they were kind of, you know, putting all. Anyway, you know what I mean? People which can't really play technical or something like that. But now it's, it's. It's not there anymore because you can hear what's going on, you know. You have great production and good budget for it. Well, it's just, you know, a lot of power in, involved in these type of vocals. And a lot of people, they, they don't think that there's too much talent in it. You know, they just kind of think that people are, you know, just barking vocals out or whatever, not even basically singing any words. But I do try to get every single lyric I write into my, uh, my singing style. So we try to keep it, keep it up. Once everybody gets their own style, I think, you know, it'll, death metal will be definitely be an established form of music that people will, will know and grow to love. You're 
death metal, then you're most influenced by basic stuff. So yeah, two years ago, death metal was always uh, talking about uh, real gory things. Gory you know, stuff, you know. Blood all over, guts all over, uh, kill everybody. Uh, now we're we're more mature in what we do. We write brutal stuff, but we try to put a lot of time and stuff into it. We and like I said, we we usually deal mostly all in fact or you know subjects that are based on fact or you know have some theory you know behind them and uh, you know we actually go to the library and research our you know our political content think up the lyrics just like uh, Stephen King or Clive Barker or any other um, horror novelist or anybody else would do except I shorten it and I go right to the point instead of putting so much fill in the blanks you know I just go right to the point with the lyrics and it's up front and uh, brutal, brutal for everybody. It does reflect something. And what it reflects, I think, is a sort of nihilistic despair. Uh, you're attacking convention, you're attacking... Right now, people think that death metal is like, just talk about Satan yeah. and things like that, but it's kind of lame. We aren't devil worshippers or nothing like that. Nothing comes before us, no God. And if we worship Satan, that would be putting ourselves before a god, or putting a god before ourselves, and that's not right in our viewpoint. Anything I've written about satanic lyrics is make believe, and I don't have a problem with telling kids that because maybe that'll save a problem in the long run, you know? Now I'm just saying enjoy it for what it is because that's all it is. Uh, it's all symbolism. It's, it's uh, everything represents something. And the drinking of blood is representing drinking life. You know, I mean, it's really, it's just like the, the uh, Catholic religion, which I'm somewhat familiar with. It has so many things that are sim symbolistic. You know, it's all, all these names mean something, and it's not to be taken literally. When I read the lyrics, what I see is a lot of anger, uh, some, um, they also exhibit a hopelessness. They don't see hope. There's no hope in those songs. Uh, and also, there's no desire to, to, to change things, more accepting of what, what they see. Um, in a way, they are depressing. What do you think is the appeal of this, you know, speed, really hard thrash death metal music? Um, it's. It's the type of thing where, you know, it's it's an aggression thing. I mean, that's what we get off on it from, you know. I mean, I like a lot of other kinds of music, but what I like to play is, you know, you know, straight ahead, really powerful, fast, you know, aggressive style of music. Why do you guys like death metal? It's aggression energetic. It's energetic. It's energetic. It's energetic. It's aggression release. Aggression release. It's more of expression when when they are feeling angry, when they're feeling sad when they're feeling hostile, that the music which shows those kind of feelings, that they listen to that because it mirrors the, their emotions. I, I doubt very much whether it can cause violence. And if it does cause violence in some people or some young people, then I would say that maybe those young people were feeling violent anyway for other reasons. Adolescents, man. That one word alone should tell you why they're in the music. Parents don't like it, so kids love it. Uh, if parents start reading some of this stuff, then they're going to get upset, and time and again this has happened. Uh, so that, that music has a particular force in our society uh, that, that, that leads people to get very excited and very upset over this. Uh, it, 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 it seems as if it can be. Uh, a, a mysterious force debauching the minds of, of, of young people. Most of this, quite frankly, is nonsense. Most of it is nonsense. Uh, it is very easy to target in upon particular groups and attack them and, and say, oh, this is bad, oh, this is leading to moral decay and so on. But, but there's very, very little proof for this. You're always going to find one or two cases of people drugged out, uh, reading pornographic literature, whether violent or, or sexual, and listening to this kind of nonsense. And you can, you can hold them up as an example, but, but one or two cases out of, out of uh, millions of people doesn't really amount to very much. There's a lot of evidence that, uh, that all the negative things in the environment, let's say, uh, in bad neighborhood, drugs being available, um, 
all these kind of things, this kind of music, that they only become dangerous and they only affect those youngsters who are, have not a good, warm, close relationship with their parents, who feel isolated from their parents, isolated from any caring adults, and therefore they feel very lonely, and they do not know where to get help. Tell your kids, hey, you can't listen to that. You know, by looking at a cover. Hold on, man. See, because they, first of all, you have teachers, you have parents, you have all these, all these authority figures with kids saying, hey, you can't do this, you can't do that. And the kids, all they want to do, man, they go in their room, they pop the tapes in, and they, they just, you know, they get as brutal as they can, just to piss everyone off. And if they, would, if the parents would sit down and say, all right, you want to listen to this, you really care about listening, to this, let me see why, let me read the lyrics, let me listen to it with you, man. And but they don't ever do that, you know. They just automatically, as soon as they see a cover, that's it. You know, I don't like that cover. You're not listening to it. The kid's gonna be like, you know, the hell with you. I'm gonna you listen to it give, twice as much. You, know? you gotta give the child freedom to explore what he you know? wants. I mean, you know, you the more you tell someone no, the more they're, they're gonna, gonna want to do it. it. And why does it appeal? Because young men are trying to work out their masculinity and their independence, and they like violence, and they like they like things that are definite and, and, and clear. And if they don't find it in one source, they'll go to something else. Now, this is catharsis. And what I mean I say catharsis, it is a release. When it begins to program, that's more worrisome. But I, I simply do not believe that there is evidence to suggest that music, by and large, does this. I am much more fearful of visual images because we are visually oriented. And so I worry more about the slasher movies than I do, or about superbly made uh, um, thrillers uh, with have a pornographic element like Silence of the Lambs, that's so, that's so well made, than I do about this stuff, which frankly isn't very well made. Television has always been aware of the fact that it goes into people's homes uh, and that they don't pay for it in a direct sense, and so it really ought not to, to offend people so brutally. And I think TV is quite right. Uh, you, you, television executives have to be very careful about what they put in the air and what they allow into our homes. So, so, so that concern is, is, is fair. When you mix the music with the visuals, then you've got a very potent mix, and that can leave imprints in our minds. And so you've got to be concerned about that.
such a big thing, you know, it, it started with the first uh, obituary and then atheist and then Sepultura, Sepultura went and then, it, I mean, just... So Scotty was still going to school whenever, uh, <laughs> yeah, he was still going yeah, to school. he was still in he was school still like five bucks an hour when he did, when he did our, our demo album. and stuff. So, then he became like Mr. Now producer. Now he's like Joe producer you know? now. He's Great guy. Very cool guy. Super, super One of the guy. nicest guys. Everyone will tell you that. I don't, I've never heard anyone say anything bad about him. Great studio. It's, it's just a great place. Seattle's got that whatever, there's new renaissance, whatever. Yeah. And uh, Florida's got death metal, and New York City's got serious hardcore, and you know, it's different all around the country, and people are just starting to mix together, so there's more people of each at shows. You know? you have your own style, you'll stand out. You yeah. have to go to Morris Sound. I mean, the reason for going to Moore Sound is just because it's the best studio in the world for this type of music, and there's no one better than Scott Burns to produce records, you know, um, on, a, on a personal basis and on a business level. He's the, the greatest producer on earth as far as I'm concerned, and as for this band, I don't think we're ever going to record anywhere else. So I mean, to all those people that say it's trendy to record at Moore Sound, they're basically just, they just have no knowledge of what's there. Yeah, that's right. Florida has been the mecca for death metal, and uh, especially with guru Scott Burns. So we've got right now on the line via the telephone from Tampa, Florida. Hi, Scott. How are you doing? Good, Teresa. How are you? Thanks for being on the show today. A Thanks lot of people uh, know about you, a lot of death metal fans, and uh, don't know your work. And I wanted to know what you're producing right now. Who are you working with? Uh, well, we just finished uh, Obituary. And uh, I'm still working on the new Deicide album. Oh, yeah? How does that sounding? Uh, it's pretty brutal. Should be a killer <laughs> record. How's the production on it? Has it been improving? Yeah, I think it should sound better than the first one. Uh, you know, Glenn's changed his vocal style some. It's a little lower, a um, little heavier. Um, the songs are a little faster. He blasts more. Uh, it should be really good. Faster, huh? Okay, Scott, what I want to know is, um, what do you, how, how do you think death metal came into being? What do you think it came out of, and how do you see it changing in the next couple of years? Um, I don't know. It probably came from bands like Motorhead and Venom and um, stuff that was on the, the fringe of metal, you know, back in, you know, later 70s, beginning of the early 80s. But why? Um, why, did it, why did it go in, you know, such a more brutal route? Oh, I don't know. I just think, you know, ever since Elvis or whatever, kids always want something a little more and a little more. And, um, you know, I mean, this is, you know, based on metal and just like Sabbath, how they were, uh, you know, uh, extreme band at their time. You know, I mean, things just, you know, I mean, even Metallica was extreme for their time when they first came out. And I think as things progress on, just things become more extreme and, you know, people look for something more over the top each time and death metal happens to be it right now. So what's going to top death metal? I mean, can you think of something? Uh, death metal, it's going to top uh, polka metal. I don't know, accordions and the, <laughs> I don't know what it'll top. Uh, it'll be, you know, I'm, I'm sure it'll refine itself and, uh, but who knows? I mean, there'll be some other form of extreme music and maybe it won't be metal for a while. Maybe it'll go back to some type of alternative punk or hardcore scene and then you know it'll revert to metal again i mean i think the scene might change or whatever i mean industrial types of music and metal seem to be melting right now bands like god flesh and stuff like that and you know ministries tended to become more metal maybe that'll take a you know form a root yeah scott what do you think about people that criticize death metal i'm not talking about you know a parent who knows nothing about the music and just catches on to the lyrics one day and realizes what they're saying but people that are in the music industry and may say they may be afraid that um you know sometimes kids who are already prone to violence may go over the top with you know some of these lyrics or their involvement with the bands do you think that at all or and what do you think about those criticisms uh, i think it's probably you know not so true because i think you know it's a healthy thing. Uh, kids just want, you know, some type of outlet. You know, I mean, we're all looking for something. 
and, uh, you know, it releases a little aggression and it's a safe way to do it. I mean, I think kids that are uh, have problems would have problems whether they listen to death metal or not. I mean, if you were, uh, you know, I mean, it's just like a person who has a dependency problem with drugs or alcohol. I mean, you know, I mean, take it to another thing with music. I mean, just that person has a problem. And, you know, I, I don't think you can say that music causes anything i mean you know some things may be related to it but it's the person that that uh that has the problem it's not okay. the music you know and and uh I mean, nobody forced him to listen to a record or whatever he may say you know I okay think. scott scott i'm gonna have to go now i could chat with you for a few minutes longer but we were on a time here yes sir yes ma'am thank you very much for joining me Thank you, Teresa. Keep working on those records and send us news of what's happening. Okay. Catch you later. Thank you. Okay, that's it. It just about wraps it up here for us. From the metal capital of the world, this is the Tampa Bay Spike, a local magazine. And today, the Power 30 is going to be coming at you still from Florida. We are in Tampa at Morris Sound Recording. This is the mecca of metal world in this area. We're going to go in and check out and see what's happening. Well, Jim, you're the owner one of the co-owners oh, yeah. of Morris Sound. You started it with your brother. Can you tell me how you started? Well, uh, my brother had a studio in Mississippi, and I was a musician and working at a music store here in Florida, and we decided to kind of pool our resources and try to open a studio. So we figured that Tampa was, which is where I was living, you know, I already knew a lot of the people in the music industry. It felt like a good spot. We did a, kind of a really um, cheesy market survey. <laughs> to find out if this is a good location and we both liked Florida so we decided to stay right here and open one up and uh, we opened it up with on a shoestring budget and uh, we've been building it now for this is our 12th year I think. Jim why do so many death metal bands come here and record at your studio? Um, good question. I think it originally started uh, it originally started because uh, we kinda got in on the ground floor of the whole Florida heavy metal scene we did the, the very first Sabotage album and uh, the early Nasty Savage records. And uh, that kind of started uh, uh, a groundswell in the area. And uh, I think the biggest reason we're so, we got so involved in it was most places people, these guys would go to record, they didn't care about the, the recording studio and the engineers didn't really care about that kind of music. They didn't like it, so they didn't do a good job of it. And we did a good job, or tried to do a good job right from the gate. So. It made it, uh, it made us probably one of the only facilities in the world that was into it. That tried welcoming to, the it, bands. Yeah, and we welcome, you know, we welcomed quite a few of them th by the, at this point. Can I say I'm really pissed about the World Series? Can we talk? Oh, are you? Oh, come on. No, I'm not. It's a oh, joke. Yeah, it's oh, humor. Because I'm an Atlanta Braves fan. Yeah. Oh, oh wasn't that a great last game? Oh, yeah. man. <laughs> it was great. Let me tell you something. I know. God damn it, the Braves! No, the best part was James. Go Blue Jays. Okay. Yep. Who's that? That's it's Ralph. Shredder. Ralph? That's Ralph Santola from Eyewitness. <laughs> and he's here recording at Morris Sound also. He has a commercial hard rock band. And he loves Michael Schenker. Well, this is a pretty. <laughs> Are you jerking me around? No. Okay, uh, we are in Morris Sound Studios. This is Scott Burns. And Scott has just about produced every worthwhile death metal band around. Scott, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And you certainly have made a career out of producing death metal. Well, I thank you very much. So what is it, the appeal to you? What is it that makes you stick it out and keep doing it and, uh, you know, interferes with other projects too? Uh, I don't know. I always like metal and especially uh, used to like a lot of punk stuff and just stuff that's extreme. And uh, I don't know. It's, uh, I just like stuff that's, uh, I don't know, evil, rowdy. Uh, 
You don't look too evil and Scott ratty. <laughs> I can be evil. So, Scott, who has recorded here? Some of the bands. Can you go through them? Sure. Uh, Sabotage, uh, Warrant, Sepultura, Morbid Angel, Death, Obituary, Deicide, Cannibal Corpse, Gore Guts, Atheist, uh, Demolition Hammer, uh, Ass Suck, um, who else? That's there's a, a, there's a million. So, it sounds like a list of a horror film. <laughs> of those bands, how many have you personally produced? Um, I've probably done like uh, 30 different bands. Most of the ones that you've listed that you've worked with? Yes. Not Warrant, not Morbid Angel, and uh, not Sabotage. <laughs> Okay, so when you're producing here, what happens? What goes on? Not so much with the technical buttons here that we were discussing before, but what goes on with the band? They sit, they, they play in there, you sit in here, and what do you do? What do you tell them to do? <laughs> I change everything, especially bass players. No. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of bass players present here? Hey, there goes one. <laughs> See ya. No. What do we do? I uh, usually at the studio out there, uh, the amplifiers or if they're singing, the vocals for isolation and uh, what do we do I don't you know uh, we just try and capture good performances on tape and uh, let them play their music usually with a band like say um, death how many uh, takes of each song will you do before you get the right mix that you need I don't know it just depends on how well the band's playing and uh, what's going on I mean sometimes it can be in one take other times it might be 250 takes just depends till you get the right take do you, in, do you put your image of what the band should sound like on the albums a lot? Like, do they, do you have a lot of fights? Do things happen like that? Oh, we, everyone has fights, but we're all metal brothers united and we come through at the end. <laughs> but no, I'm serious. Uh, I mean, you know, we have disagreements and we try and come through and, uh, you know, and get the best thing. But, I mean, Chuck definitely has his idea and the band members, and I don't try and change that. I just try and add things that may complement it. And all, and like I said, is, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's not my album, it's theirs. But I just try and give good input. And when they tell me to shut up, I shut up. Well, the, this Metal Brothers United, that's, that, that's something very dear to your heart. <laughs> because we are Metallic Brothers United. And that's why it's not just death metal. See, look at this, right here. This sums it all up. This is part of the Metallic universe. <laughs> Like well, what is it? Tell me. This is the metallic grapefruit from the abysmal fires of hell, grown from my tree in sunny Florida. And these are people that we worship. King Diamond, one of the greatest metalers around. Lemmy, Rob Halford, Gene Simmons, Tom Warrior. And? I don't know who these guys are, but they look funny. <laughs> so anyway, so that's why we're Metal Brothers United for Metal. Well, that's recording at Morris Sound. And, to show how metal we are, Chuck is on the orb. <laughs> the whole universe spins around Chuck from death. Hey, there was one thing that we talked about when we were off camera that I really wanted you to repeat about the death metal scene. Yeah. And how, you know, that, so right now there are like a million bands coming out that sound like other bands. Yeah. So what's going to happen? No, I don't know. I mean, I think like any scene, there's a million... Now death metal's become really popular, and it's an inbreeding kind of thing. It's a lot of these new bands are young and they're trying, which is really cool. But they're still they're copying bands that still exist, like Death, Morbid Angel, Obituary, etc. And because of that, the originality is lost. It's like if a band came out now that sounded like Metallica, why would you want to listen to them when Metallica still exists? And I think that's part of the problem now with death metal a little bit is there's too many bands that sound the same. But like anything, like you know, any type of movement, you know, the good bands will stick around and then a lot of the bad bands will just fade away. But I mean, it's cool that everyone is trying and that they're into it. I don't mean it in a bad way. I just mean it, 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 it becomes rather derivative after a while. You hear riffs stolen from other bands that still exist. What makes a good death metal band? What makes a good death metal band? Just extreme and they have their own sound and fast and angry and something that your mom doesn't like. <laughs> and brutal? And brutal. It's got to be brutal. Thank <laughs> you.
No. Hi. 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 How are everything else? How are you doing? I'm Teresa. Nice to meet you. I'm Chug. How are you Hi, Chug. Very nice to meet you, finally. This is Andy. Hi, Andy. Andy. How you doing? I'm all right. How are you? Good. He's hanging out with Chuck. Chuck Schuldiner from Death. And look, Andy from King Diamond. This is a bit of a coincidence. I mean, you're from Sweden. What are you doing here? Well, I'm actually recording a bit with the guys. Which um, guys? Death guys. You are, huh? What, what, what project is this going to be? Um, it's still going to be Death, you know. Chuck's band, you know. But so you're just, help, you're just like uh, joining in? Yeah, you... actually I was asked to do a couple of solos on it, you know, so. Great. Well, uh, Chuck, I have to tell you that for all your reputation as being like the death metal guru, you're far too nice <laughs> and too pleasant. Yeah, well, like sure, <laughs> just to crush any misconceptions of death metalers being cruel to animals or anything. I'm an animal lover. And uh, yeah, you know, people will probably be surprised when, if they met a lot of bands. You know, especially in this type of music, because everyone seems extreme and, you know, they put on this image. But, you know, I'm definitely whatever trying to break that. Yeah. You know, we're people too. What does the scene still do for you? What does the music still do for you? And where, where are you taking it, like with the new recording, for example? Um, well, I, I like to think that we're taking it to a new level each record. I want to stay musical and put in my influences, which um, are. Uh, have to do with a lot of melodic bands, uh, anything from, uh, you know, Merciful Fate, King Diamond, to, uh, you know, a lot of bands, uh, Watchtower, you know, um, Queen's Reich, uh, a lot of old heavier stuff like Possess. You know, I mean, I'm trying to incorporate all my personal tastes, influences and stuff, you know, and let them come out. I'm not into holding back, trying to live up to a certain reputation of being the heaviest you know, I'm not out for that. You know, I'm into a lot of different types of music, you know. What about what's happening with Merciful Fate? Uh, Merciful Fate is recording in Dallas right now with the original lineup except for the drummer. I don't know the guy's name, but uh, they, they have been in the studio for like two weeks, I think. And they'll be done in about uh, three or four weeks. And uh, I don't really know what's going to happen with it, but... What I know is that this album is going to be released, and uh, as soon as it's released, we're going to continue to start working on the King Diamond thing. So that's, Which it's is, just in the back burner for now? Uh, well, you never know, you know, but uh, all the music for King Diamond is already done. It's written everything, and um, you'll probably go into the studio like uh, this summer. What's, what's the name of the album going to be? Uh, Spider's Lullaby. Spider's Lullaby. Yeah. And uh, is it going to go in any new direction, or what do you think? Does, uh, is this little, you know, hiatus here more sound uh, influenced you in any way? Uh, a bit, maybe, yeah. But since um, the songs are already done and all that, you know, we, uh, I don't think we're going to change that for the next album. So it will be basically the same, like King Diamond style. But of course, better songs. Chuck, a lot of people credit you with starting the death metal scene, death metal genre. What do you think when they say that? Um, well, it's definitely flattering, but I really can't consider myself to have started it. I think bands like Venom, uh, in my opinion, Venom were the first to have the brutal vocal style, you know, tuning low their instruments, um, that uh, initial really brutal aggression. But I think maybe I've kept it going you know, to what death metal is today as far as, you know, a lot of those old bands are no longer going like Venom. And I guess I picked up where they left off and, you know, I'm still in there, luckily. Yeah. But you having, uh, when, when you first, when you then got a band named Death, right. then that sort of coined the term. That's probably another reason why. It's not just what you were doing, but the fact that you called it something. Right, it's a pretty brutal name, definitely. Uh, at the time, I wanted something, you know, extreme, something brutal, shocking to go along with the music, you know, and uh, now I would probably call it something different, but it's kind of right. stuck with us, and, you know, it's just a name, and I hope people really don't get a wrong impression that we're, like, anti-life, because, you know. They do, though. 
people yeah, do get that impression right. all the time like not just uh parents but other people that listen to heavy metal that won't listen to death metal right they just think oh what's that stuff <laughs> yeah it's a drag hopefully they'll read the lyrics and realize i'm saying something that maybe they can relate to or something you know i have a lot of songs that i think a lot of people can relate to well you've yeah. said that you don't want to be lumped in with the other uh sort of death metal bands why is that i just <laughs> I'm not going to name anyone, but I think in all types of music, you know, when something gets real big, it tends to get out of control. I think some bands are out of control with what they're doing. They just don't realize what they're doing. You know, a lot of things are hurting this music. It's giving people an excuse to kind of say, wait, this is a bit extreme. You know, we need to do something. You know, I just, I'm tired of that, you know, the negative vibe, you know. It's funny having both of you here because you're both representing uh, two places where death metal is really, really popular. And of course, it makes sense why you're here together. But do you ever think why? Like, why Florida? Why Tampa? Why Sweden? This is probably the heavy metal capital of the uh, United States now, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> kind of. It's bizarre. I have no... Uh, I cannot back uh, that up with a uh, proper answer. I think, uh, I don't know, maybe it's the oranges or, <laughs> I don't know, the mosquitoes or something, I don't know. Maybe the heavy metals aren't that heavy after all, I mean, they're coming down here for the sunshine, I guess. That's right. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know, it's weird. Maybe they played in Sweden to keep warm. <laughs> well, that's everything, okay, cold countries, Canada, Sweden, you know, same type of climate. It's like, you, got, you hang out a lot indoors. You hang out in your basement a lot, you know, people play a lot of guitar. But Florida, why aren't you on the beach? <laughs> I don't know. I wish we were. Definitely. Okay, let's check out Death on the Power 30. This is Lack of Comprehension. Brutal. Metal. <laughs> David, Vincent, how you doing, David? Hi, how are you? So you're here recording your new album, which has just been in progress for two days. Actually, yes, we just got started. And uh, we actually prefer to work at night, as you can see. Um, Looking forward to it. It's going to be uh, it's going to be quite a record, I think. How is it going to be different from Blessed Are the Sick? Well, uh, it's going to be different in a lot of ways. We're trying some new techniques now, um, working with some different people, and uh, I think uh, I think the re record's going to speak for itself when it comes out. Now, in the past, um, a lot of your lyrics have dealt with the occult, and some people have even pegged you for Satanist. Uh, is that going to be apparent at all in the new album, or what do you have to say about that? Well, my lyrics have always come from me, and I haven't changed any, so you can read into that whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's, what, what's, what, what are you into right now that has changed in the last couple of years? Anything different? Well, it's gotten more severe, if anything else. Uh, I don't think that uh, there's no different path. It's just further on, further on in, the, in the pollution stage, I think. <laughs> well, there's been a lot of new bands in the last few years that have come out after death metal has become better known and a lot of them people call imitators. What do you think about that? Well, um, I've never really concerned myself with what a lot of the other bands have done. Uh, we're more concerned with what we do and uh, when you go through life with uh, with blinders on, sometimes it keeps you away from things that, uh, that really are insignificant anyway. Well, you guys seem very intense in there. Um, is there a lot of pressure? I mean, you're working with a great producer, Fleming, who's worked with Metallica as well, Master of Puppets. Just as for all. Well, Fleming is certainly uh, is certainly you know wonderful to work with, um, and we do put a lot of pressure on ourselves to uh, to exceed some of the things we've done in the past, as well as to uh, get ourselves in, in the type of mood that we need to to uh, deliver the kind of performance that we want to. So it, it is very tense, and uh, it's something that we need to really just just you know put our noses to the grindstone and uh, and get in there and really turn out some brutal stuff. Yeah. 